Hi everybody and a very warm welcome back to the Watercolour Studio. Now today, to be fair, I wasn't sure quite what I was going to do for you. So let's roll that intro. Let's see what I figured out. Hi everybody and a warm welcome back. As I said just now, I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do for you guys this week. I had a few ideas kicking around, but I really hadn't settled on any one of them. But I also had a big job to do in the studio over the next couple of weeks, and that is literally sort out the loft above me here. It's been crammed full of everything since we moved in over eight years, nine years ago, and it really needed to sort out so that I could bring back essential art things such as paintings and stuff from the gallery so they can be stored safely and kept well for the future. So I've started that work today and it has taken an awful lot of the day up and I'm absolutely nowhere near where I thought I was going to be. So that's another story. But the idea for this week is going to be based around my drawing. I really love to sketch and I love to sketch in inks as well. And I've done a few videos of late on this subject and I felt that I wanted to take it a little further. I wanted to show you guys some of the inks that I use or have got to use and also some of the pens and the equipment that I use to do that. And I'm going to give a little bit of a demonstration with those as well. Not uh, a great big picture or anything like that, just a few little cameo sketches just to give you an idea of how the pens and the inks perform. So without further ado, let's jump straight in. Okay guys, let's start talking about some of the inks that I've got. Now under this piece of paper, I have a fair collection of some of the inks that I have bought myself to use. Now they are not by any means the entire amount of different inks you can buy. There are dozens of different inks by dozens of different manufacturers and each of them will affect the drawing and the way that you use them in different ways of course. Now primarily we've got about three different types of ink here and by that I mean we've got some inks that are water soluble. Now we all know of course things like Parker a good writing ink. We've had these from since school days and I remember the blue and I've still got that and I also use the black. Now that is a water soluble ink. These ones are fairly specific ones. They're titled, they're by certain uh, companies. I'm not sure the exact names. If I remember them, I'll put them in the description underneath this video. But these are able to split. Now there is a thing called chromatography chromatography I think that's what it's called and um, it's where the constituent parts of an ink are made up of different colors of ink and when you actually put them on certain papers and add water to them they can split out they can divide and become separate and create some wonderful effects and these inks are bought for the reasons that they split out in different ways giving beautiful colors and this one I feel, to be all honest, I mean, these are very, very good, but this one I love because it just works every time. It gives a beautiful goldy yellow color against that blue and the gray of the cooler black color. So I'm going to take these out of it altogether because we're not really talking about these today, although you can do. And there are some fantastic sketches you can do where you can allow the sketch to be bled with water at some point in the future and then they even go back in with some uh, permanent ink afterwards should you wish to do that. Now this one here, I, oh, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, it's all unraveling, best laid plans and all of that. But this one, this ink here is Pelican Drawing Ink. Now I've had this bottle 35 40 years I'm uh, it's so old I don't even know exactly where I got it from and there's still a large amount in there because it's not one that I use very often the reason is you can't put this into a fountain pen it's got a chemical or a hardener within the ink it's an old document styling and it it just messes up any pens that you put it with so this is only really good as a dipping pen where you can wash that nib off at the end of the session or a stick or something like that 
but never through a fountain pen. But you can get some great and have some great fun with this stuff. Now, I don't carry this big bottle around with me. I decant some off into a smaller bottle with a bit of gauze inside that I can then actually uh, take this out in the field. And if I want to use a stick and I want to use some India ink, I can go right ahead and do that. But again, today is not about that. I just wanted to show you some of the varieties. What today about is about are these little beasties here. Now, I'm going to narrow that down a little further at the moment because I use Noodler's Bullet Ink and I also use Deatramentous Document Ink. Now, when it comes to my drawing, it depends the effects that I want to achieve because this one is almost waterproof, but it actually isn't totally waterproof. And the top layer can give way at any given time if you add water to it. You do need to let these things dry off anyway before you apply any water to the surface because they do, uh, that or they are fugitive, they are active until they are dry. And this one just remains a little bit more of a fugitive, uh, not totally dry ink. It, it says it does, but it's not that uh, great at being totally waterproof. But if you can get that down and you use it you can have some wonderful effects with that too so that is one i use often but these are my favorite of all these are uh, the waterproof inks now these are waterproof inks when you put these down they are designed to go through a fountain pen and at the same time they will dry and they will dry waterproof so you can apply anything on them now here's my little um, bit of a confession. <laughs> These ones I didn't have until this week. These two I've had a little while. I started off a long time back using Deatramentus through uh, pens called Noodler Creepers, which are these little fellas. A company called Noodler creates some wonderful pens and they do basically two types. They have this creeper and then they have a slightly larger one as you can see the difference in the size and that is called the Ahab. Now there's a little story for me or between me and those pens but I started off life using just black ink through one of these and it served me quite well. Never perfect because these can be a real devil to get going when it comes to drawing. You have a lot of messing around. I can show you some of the effects here today where I've been trying to get these things to work for me unlike other pens that just go straight on and do the job regardless. But that's another story. So anyway, I got a black and I like the old fashioned drawings. I like drawings that were done in the Renaissance and um, all the sort of old Dutch masters. Well, I, I'm assuming, you know, there were so many different schools uh, of the past from uh, Rembrandt and, and everyone. They've done all these beautiful old drawings out in the field beautiful styles and using a lot of red inks as well as black inks or uh, brown inks and I just love that look I'm forever trying to recreate it and I know one or two people out there certainly with regards to YouTube actually manage to do it very well they are extremely competent at that style of sketching and I'm still to be fair honestly learning that sort of style so everything I give you today there are people out there that are doing what I'm doing probably a lot better than I am but at least I'm having a go and I'm enjoying that process and that's sort of the message that I'm trying to give or convey to you guys but I then went to a browning which I bought was urban sienna a great color and I then realized that there was another one, a brown ink, which is one I've recently got. And on top of that, on the recommendation of another YouTuber that I've seen, using the dark red. Now, that, you might think, is a little bit bizarre for a sketch. But honestly, I've seen other people using this. It really comes out quite well. So those are the inks that I've got. And those are what my pens are charged with. Now, I say pens, plural, very loosely. Now, as regards pen, I'm just going to lay some out here and I'm going to talk you through those as we go. <laughs> and you're going to say, why have I got so many pens? Well, my wife keeps asking me the same question, to be fair, and I can't answer any more than I can answer you. But here we go with some of the pens that I use and employ. Now, 
I can only pick one up at a time. Fair shout. I can only pick one up at a time and use one at a time. But I have two things going on with these pens. One, I uh, have two kits. I use a small sketching kit, as well you all know. And I also have my larger rucksack watercolour set, which has got sketching abilities in that too. So I tend to sort of double up a little bit with some of my kit, some of my watercolours and all that sort of thing, drawing stuff. Indeed, I have got two uh, pad, you know, two um, cases that I've got drawing implements in. This one is for my little kit because it's got my little um, travel brushes in and I have this one that has no travel brushes in because they're contained in yet another uh, kit bag but these are pencils and white stuff and contain some of these so okay I have a lot of pens and I, I make no apology for that because I've got several inks as well so what you'll see here there are three different types of pen nibs to start with several pens yes three different types of pen nibs and basically what we've got in these two are what they call a food or food a nib now that is a, a happy accident as i understand where a nib was bent up and it creates a lovely italic writing implement but it does take a particular way of drawing because to make a mark with it <laughs> okay we, we won't worry about that <laughs> But basically, you can draw with a fine line on the tip, and then by bringing that down at a different angle, you increase the thickness of the line. So that's a food a nib. So it allows you to draw with thick lines and thin lines almost at will, just by the practice of tilting the, the hand up and down. Now, there are several of these on the market. This one's called a sailor food a. There is a cheaper version of this, which is very sort of thin and stick line like a pencil in size uh, and that costs half the price of this one I bought this one because to me it feels more like a fountain pen it feels a little heavier and firm in my hand so that's why I went for this one but it does cost twice as much as the other one the other one that I've got is the same it's a it's another food a nib why I needed two well I told you I got two kits so that's why I got two and this one is a what they call a a mountain blue or something like that but it's Hongdian and it's the same thing it's a 55 mil uh, 55 degree angle and I can change that and change the style and line that I create so when I'm drawing I can create lots of thin and thick marks as I want to all right so that gets and tells you all about the first type of nib and I have two of those, both delivering black ink, by the way. Now, I have got several Lame pencils or pens. Lame are a very, very good brand, but they have non flex, they're just standard nibs, but they are different sizes extra fine, fine, medium, and bold. And there's a little uh, engraving on each nib giving you E, F, F, M, and B and they tell you the sizes obviously and that really tells you all you need to know now the thing about those are and i've got another one there i've got uh i've got two mediums i've got a fine extra fine and a bold and i keep the three different ones in one drawing set and i keep the two mediums in another and one of them is loaded with brown ink or urban sienna so I had the ability to play around with black different lines. So basically where this one pen will deliver me thick and thin lines in one pen, I have to have two to three pens to do the same thing with the lame because I need a thin line. I change the pen up to a thicker line and the boldest of all the lines. So I can do that four different stages should I want to make small increments so I can jump from extra fine to bold in the same sort of step as this will deliver so that's why I have the lemmes now I have talked to you briefly about these fellows this is a Twasby I think that's how you pronounce it it's very much like a lame pen uh, it's an exquisite pen and it's a it's just a standard uh, medium nib or fine nib I think this one is 
and I only had the one. I just bought it out of as a whim to try it out as another mate, just to see how it worked out. It works excellently, and I thoroughly recommend that as a pen as well. But I have a love-hate relationship, I'm going to tell you right now. I have a love-hate relationship with Noodler. Nothing wrong with Noodler. They, they are a really, really good company. And they have a pen that can be broken down and almost all the parts in it can be replaced at will. And um, it's, it's been a stalwart for many artists uh, for a long, long time. And they have this beautiful tendency to create some wonderful uh, color combinations in their pens and the plastics and give them some actually equally crazy names as well and including their inks of course which is you know noodlers bullet ink and things like that so yeah it's all part and parcel now the thing is that the love-hate relationship that i've had and it could just be down to me gotta be fair i'm not going to argue this point is that they are the devil's own when it comes to getting them underway if i these ones you saw me show you this just now i did all that work to get these three activated again i've had these before and i sent them back because they just would not work for me i just could not keep on top of them these ones i bought the other day along with those inks and i'm hoping that they will keep working without a problem but this is sort of it just dries up look even that that was made to work just now I'm doing this trying to get it going again it will start to work like that but you shouldn't have to do that with a pen so if any of you out there use uh, noodler pens uh, the Ahab in particular uh, or the creeper if you don't have the problems that I'm having then please get in touch with me through comments or whatever or an email and let me know what you do that may be different to what I do. I felt that I had it happen in every pen that I've uh, worked with Noodler. And I'm wondering, is it the ink that I'm putting through? Well, the Diatramentus ink is designed for Noodler. Uh, or it's designed for fountain pens, not necessarily Noodler. But when you think of things like the Lame, this can be sitting in my bag for six months. And the moment I get it out, it just works. It's no problem at all put one of these in for six months and you have to try and get all the ink out of it wash it out and start again it's a frustration but i'm hoping um that these will work for me now why if i've had so much problem with them have i gone and bought another three new ones this week well there is a good reason for that and i'm going to get right on to it <laughs> i thought this would be a quick video it's not really becoming quick anything okay now the um, Noodler nibs come as a flexible nib. Now, they're semi-flexible. They're not ultra-flexible, but they're semi-flexible. But what that means is that as you press down on the tines of the uh, pen, they will split apart. And the reason I got the Ahab is because they are more evident. See how that splits? Hopefully, I can maybe bring the camera in. So it's already not working out as I wanted it to but it will split and deliver a much thicker line now if the pen is not designed to have a flex nib in and most pens are not they normally have to be created in a slightly different way that they can deliver enough ink fast enough without either splashing everywhere and that's the tendency you can really slosh that down and it will just blot everywhere but it does get my ink pen working but the nice thing is that i can work thick uh, <laughs> thin and thick with one pen thin and thick with one pen now that's great because if your normal drawing or writing action is to change the way that you work and write whatever you're doing as and when you need to Unlike the food nib where you've got to physically rise and lower, and that takes practice. This doesn't take the practice. This is a natural behavioral action when writing and sketching and drawing. You know, when you've got a pencil, you can uh, sort of press harder and you get a thicker line or a darker line. And it's no different with this pen. You can do thin and you can do thick just by putting pressure and spreading the tines of the nib. 
and the only pens you can really buy in this country UK are these noodlers now there is a there is another nib out there that I desperately try to get my hands on I just couldn't I wanted to get a few nibs by a company called FPR I'm not sure what it stands for but there's a number six ultra flex nib they do it's a steel nib now normally flex nibs are very very expensive because they're normally gold and they or gold coated and they cost an earth to put in a pen of equal stature pilot pens costing in excess of 130 140 pounds to begin with and we're not sort of I'm not in that sort of market range to start spending that sort of money on very expensive flex nib pens but I can however if I could get my hands on them is the FPR number six uh, number six ultra flex nib I think that's what it's called and um, yeah you can buy just the nibs but then you need to find a pen to put them in and there aren't many pens out there you can do that they come with their own style there is the FPR pens that uh, do take those nibs of course they do and there is also a cheaper one which I haven't got on the top of my tongue it I'll put it in the description underneath here but there is a pen uh, that only cost about seven pounds eight pounds UK to buy this is an x750 something and um, that actually takes this nib quite well so I can get those but I can't get the nibs so if any of you out there know where you can get them in the UK without them costing uh, an arm and a leg please let me know and I will try and get my hands on some but that was the alternative to buying the noodler Ahab pen there are no other affordable flex nibs that I can or have found out uh, and the the FPR number six ultra flex one that one I can't seem to get my hands on it but that would be the ultimate prize when it comes to inexpensive flexible nibs but hopefully you'll see you get to see that by having a nib that you can just literally put pressure on you can go thin and thick and thin and thick just by applying a pressure on the pen nib itself so yes I've got tons of pens <laughs> but when you consider this little beastie will cost you from pure pens right now just a mere uh, 18 pounds 75 I think plus the tax and it comes with that nib inside and um, if you can get over the frustrations that I do about making it go when you want it to go and not be a sort of <clears throat> bit of a cuss when it comes to whether it wants to or whether it doesn't it's not that obedient <laughs> but if you can get over that then it is a remarkably good pen as I say I so desperately wanted a flex nib again and the flex nib in the noodler Ahab is bigger and better than the flex nib in the smaller uh, noodler creeper so although I've got those they are flex but they're not as good as these ones so hopefully that gives you a little bit of understanding why I've got so many pens now why not buy three of these anyway well I've got one for black <laughs> and I've got one for red hence the red body couldn't find a suitable brown one but I've got a blue one for brown that makes no sense at all but hopefully you'll understand so this has got brown ink in it I haven't got one at the moment with urban sienna I just felt the three colors would be sufficient so what I wanted to do is just do a little bit of sketching around a little bit of doodling just to show you what I enjoyed doing and seeing how you can maybe take your sketching in the future so all I'm going to be doing is using the reference that I've got on screen here right now and it is just some trees I've painted them before for you on the Romney marshes and um, and they're nothing more than that I've also put the tonal one to give you an idea of how the tone of that tree or any of the other trees and bushes relates to the sky and indeed the hills behind but I'm not really drawing that type of picture I'm just drawing trees and outlines and simplifying and all I'm going to be doing is using a uh, sort of a method of keeping everything soft loose and very very fine I'm not trying to uh, create every leaf I'm just trying to suggest 
what's up there in terms of a scribbly sketch. And I term it as a scribbly sketch because that's what I do. I don't try and draw and paint everything as is. When I'm sketching, I just want to create the sense and feeling of what's there. And I don't want to make this too laboured either because um, I want to show you some of the other colours. <laughs> and I'm not going to do that if I take too long over this. So I'm just going to do a few little sketchy pieces uh, of this tree to give you an idea of how I create a tree. Now you can see I'm doing these little scribbly marks, little swirly marks. I use them on other drawings when I've done things like the flowers on other parts of uh, my ink and washes. I did it when I did a, a little sketch the other day at the riverbank on uh, a coppice piece of uh, willow that's sitting there. And that actually, if you haven't seen that, it's on my other channel. Simple little sketch, Romney Marsh, and as I kind of put a bit of shading in, I'm hatching the shading now. Very, very light hatching. I'm only doing the short areas that are in shade of this tree, trying to leave little pockets of light here and there because the sun is reaching down. A little bit of shade underneath some of these boughs in here. And this is just done in black, of course. And um, you can, I'm going to do a little bit more of this on another tree in the brown, and then finally a little bit in the red. And just to give you an idea of how the different inks work. Now, I've heard it said that, uh, you know, doing a brown study as opposed to a black is a little bit more, um, how should you say, conducive to what you might find in nature. Black can be very, very harsh, but I like both. I like using black ink, and I also like using uh, brown inks. just depends on the mood of the day and what I'm trying to create. Going up the hill, I'm going to put the top of the hill in so it makes some sense. Now this is all in quite deep shadow, so I'm using a lot of hatching, just some squiggly marks. And all, I, all you see me do is a bit of hatching, a little bit of line work, just some scratchy scribbly bits, like that. Now I like working in the brown ink because it does sort of uh, give us uh, this sort of old feeling about it. I'm not saying I'm drawing in an old method, far from it, um, but I am trying to uh, suggest the feeling by using this brown ink. It's just something about uh, the brown sepia inks. I use a lot of Conte uh, drawing and use a lot of uh, the sanguine and other brown colors in chalks and charcoals and compress this and that uh, to get the same sort of feeling going with the old type of style and look of drawing. drawing an outline at all, I'm just letting the thing organically evolve as a drawing. I'm not trying to do anything like that. Now there's a lot of dark in here and we're going to come into that right very very soon. A few little um, trunks coming through there, little bits of branches and things in the tree that we can see, little suggestions through there. 
and we've got a lot of dark now I'm going to come in and hatch a little bit more through here take that hatching down and follow the line of that sort of shadowy area But I think we're pretty much done with this little uh, sketch of this set of shrubs here. I'm going to bring a little bit of information. Now, I'm, your brain is doing all the joining up of the dots for me. Because I'm just tapping away. I'm having a little bit of fun. But your brain is telling you that there are little tracks in here or a little bit of dark in the grasses, a little bit of shadow in front of them. Maybe that... You know, there's some shadow off the back end there. Well, there's no shadow coming this way because of the height of the day. I'm going to bring out, uh, it's not part of this drawing, but I'm just going to bring out a little distant tree. Now, I'm going to try and make that one a little lighter, a little smaller, of course, but not so much on the heavy side as the uh, one we just sketched out. A little bit of shadow in the bottom of it. And that's all it really needs. So we've got a little tree behind. We've got this one in front here. I think that works quite nicely. So for the final one then, I just want to show you what it's like to do in red. I've not drawn in red ink before. I've scribbled around in red biro in the past, but not in red ink. We are getting to the end of this now, and I'm going to come in with a bit more thick red color just to emphasize some of these shapes in here. But I wanted to just um, share my latest little art haul with you, um, which, yeah, I'll always do that. I'll always spend money on painting stuff. Um, like I need more but there you go we all tend to find a good reason to spend a bit more and um, art materials art supplies as many people call it this these days is a very big um, big sweet shop for me it's like put me in in a candy store as it were and uh, with with a great big open wallet and say help yourself um, that's me and art supplies or art materials but I love it and why not? We all should. It's so much fun, especially unwrapping and getting something fresh in that you haven't used before, like these inks. I've used the Ahabs before, and had it not been, and I'd, I'll be honest with you, because of the experience that I've had with Noodler's Ahabs and indeed the Creepers uh, in the past, I really was so hesitant about buying into some more. But if these ones work with just a little coaxing each time, uh, then that will be fine and I'll learn to live with that little um, problem with them uh, in my eyes it's a problem but it may be something I'm doing I'm not blaming the product because they're sex they are a very successful company and uh, I would have no right to um, uh, give them any disrespect from that point of view because they do a good job it's just probably something I'm doing that or should be doing or not doing but somebody out there may know the 
help me out on that. And I'd love, to, as I say, I keep saying, it, I'd love to hear from you. Okay, everybody, I had a lot of fun doing that. Now, I know I didn't do an awful lot of painting this week, but I did a lot of scribbling. But I also, and probably some of you will agree, done way too much nattering and chin wagging. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun with that. Anyway, I wanted to show you the inks that I've got and why I use them. I also wanted to show you the pens that I've got and to show you the different nibs, different styles of drawing that you can do with that and why I've got them. Now, that said, the um, pen that I got here, this Noodler Ahab, had the ones that I, I bought before worked fine, then I probably would have stuck with just those, maybe one or two of the Lamy pens, which are non-flex. So that, you know, the ones that I've been doing in my recent videos, I've used the Lamy because I've gone from a thin pen and a thick pen at the end, just to give you the same idea. But this one, you can pretty much do that in a sketch from the get-go, from start to finish. You can change just by adding a bit more pressure on uh, the tines and it delivers much more ink that way. So I do love these now What I would do love also is if I could get my hands on one or not one but a few of those lovely FPR number six Ultra flex nibs if you know anywhere in the UK I can buy one or some let me know in the comments So if you know anywhere I can get them from easily without a problem from other countries then please let me know that too i'd love to get my hands on some uh, and give them a go but in the meantime i'm sticking with the noodler a hand on the subject of community i did talk about it last week i'll talk about it briefly again is that i've got a free community on if you go to my website i put the link in the description under this video as well but hit on that link and just add your subscription uh, in, t in the way of subscribing to that uh, community just add your email of course and then you can get involved and you can look at my videos you can do artwork you can showcase what you've done you can talk about any issues you've got but it doesn't even have to be directly related to my videos it's just I'm creating this ongoing and evolving community of like-minded artists that work around me or with me or through my videos for the future that's, that we can help. I can help you and you can all help each other. And I really would like to see that take off. So have a look at that. As I say, click on the link under here and get involved with that. There is also my Patreon and there is no, um, well, I might actually put the uh, two photographs over on my patreon if you want to use those but i'm sure many of you have got plenty of photographs of trees or buildings or anything else to scribble around with and have a go at this sort of thing yourself uh, at home without worrying about my reference but i will put it out there anyway um yeah enjoy it and i catch each and every one of you in the next one don't forget there is the sky course as well so i'm doing all that i can to help you guys out and help you learn more about painting until next time Catch all of you very, very soon. I'm sure. Stay safe. Be happy and enjoy your painting. Practice, practice, practice. It doesn't make perfect, but it does make progress. Catch you soon. Bye-bye.